What's up marketers, it's Liza from Xgrowth here to wish you a happy holiday season. We'll be back in the new year with more amazing guests, but for now we'll be rebroadcasting some of our favorite episodes. So grab a drink, get comfy and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. I'm Shaheen Hoda with Xgrowth and today I'm talking to Neil Berry, Head of Global Account and Deal-Based Marketing, Center of Excellence at Ados about why should you create a theme around your ABM or more generally B2B campaigns, how to go about doing it and what are some of the mistakes you should avoid. On that note, let's dive in. Neil, thanks for joining us. No worries, good to be here. This is something I'm super excited about. You know, we put a lot of effort in terms of creating themes when we're designing ABM campaigns, right? And I feel like I've I've seen sometimes people try to do it and it's just sometimes it really backfires. What let's let's first of all define what a theme is. Like what do you how do you define a theme? What is a theme for you? I think for me a theme is probably something that when you're when you're building out your campaign whether it be ABM or any type of marketing if you've not got a theme it's going to come across as quite generic so for me a theme is about helping you trying to visualize and tell a story in a way that's really going to engage because if you've not got a theme you're just talking white noise most of the time so to give a theme gives a brand it gives an identity it gives something that the reader the user the whoever's consuming the content something to engage with and something to see as they go along that journey and it allows you to build a, a full 360 campaign that it just means that you can actually show them that there's a journey you're taking them on which most 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 customers will will engage with better rather than sort of one tactical random act of marketing is what we tend to call it Um, and that's where the themes come in and they're just if you have a good theme it it will absolutely work Um, and like you say sometimes those the the kind of themes that don't work are the ones that you know can really impact you so you do have to be careful but i think the braver the theme the, the the better result you'll get yeah, your you, your your horizon expands and and uh, gets smaller depending on how brave you are with your theme. Sometimes yeah. it expands too much and it backfire backfires. But you know that's it's really a good point. So you're talk you're saying that hey, your theme is really to create engagement. It's really to tell a story. It, it, it's it's to kind of narrate your value proposition in in a story format that the audience can yeah. relate to right and i and yeah. i love that way of thinking and i think it just brings so much value um to a campaign where do you think or where do you usually start from when you're trying to build a theme for a campaign that's a good question so i think i think i'll probably start we we use a lot of insight so especially so if we take ABM as an example, you know, we use a lot of insight, a lot of data. So if we're targeting a specific organization or we're targeting a specific individual, we'll look at what are the kind of priorities of that organization, why are they behaving in the way that they are and what are their core goals? What's the information that they've, you know, what what information have they given us and what information do we know? Um, but also what data points can we find more information about? Um, right the way down to when it's the personal level, how does this person consume content? Where do they consume it? Um, are they engaging with us already? Um, what's the core trigger points? What infuses them? What demotivates them? Once you've got that general picture, it kind of builds up this unique personality and it almost gives you the themes from that point onwards because all of a sudden you go, ah, okay, now I know how this person likes to consume or how this organisation likes to consume, how they talk about these things, why they're doing these things. And then that kind of starts to build up a much clearer picture. If you go in and you say, oh, I'm going to do a theme about, uh, I, I don't know, let's say if we're doing it about growth, you know, it, it, there's the classic, the classic thing that everybody uses is that iceberg. 
you know, everyone says, oh, you know, you see this t- t- tiny little tip, but underneath there's this huge, m- massive iceberg beneath it. It's been done so many times now that there needs to be a new theme for that. But that topic and that 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 content around the fact that actually the tip of the iceberg is only a small part of the work you've got to take on, that's absolutely relevant, but the theme is dated now. So you've got to find kind of new ways to build on that. And doing that data dive, doing all that insight allows you to look at it and go, okay, well, maybe we've got that story, but also we've got this story and this story as well. So how do we build a theme either around all of them or just around one or two to give us a little bit more focus? So that's where I start from. And then we kind of go through a process of looking at how do you tell that story? What's the core lines and strap lines and messages and keywords you, you want to hit? And that then just builds out the visual creative style as well. So it's a real, I hate to say using the word process, but it's a real workflow, right, of how things build over time. But it has to be built using insight first because otherwise you're guessing. Yeah, fair enough. So, okay, so so what I'm I'm taking away is you got to kind of know the, the, the person that you're reaching out to, the account that you're reaching out to, do a lot of research on them, understand their pain points, understand what motivates them, what demotivates them, all that stuff. Dig as much information yeah. and build as much context as you can. Then kind of create these these taglines and these phrases that are going to fit within that story and then start to look at the visualization. Is that is that correct? Did I summarize that or did I miss yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, no, it's no, it's, it's a good summary, and there's a, um, and you can even use it in sort of more general B two B marketing as well. You know, if you're targeting an industry, for example, if you're targeting banking or retail or you know, manufacturing or energy and utilities, all of them have their own ways of representing information, and they all have their own ways and languages that you've got to be conscious of. So, if you were to take as a technology company, if you to take a cloud campaign to an energy and utilities company versus a financial services company, the difference should be huge. If you're campaigning the same thing to both of them, probably not going to land quite as much, quite as well as you would hope. Yeah, very, very good point. Very good point. Where do you think marketers go wrong when they're trying to build the theme around their campaign? Where did it go wrong? I think, I mean, I've gone wrong loads in the past, right? We all, we all have to go wrong to learn and, and let's get do it. Better. Let's dig, let's, let's bring the, uh, the, the drawer out. Oh, let's, yeah, let's right. dig through this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I've, yeah, we, we've, I've gone wrong before where you know, the theme maybe hasn't been punchy enough. As a typical Brit, we're very reserved. We like to kind of do things in a certain way and, you know, even when we take stuff to the sales teams, and so when we do sort of deal-based marketing, we look at themes and we go, right, these are the themes we've come up with. And we tend to go in a bit overzealous, right, as marketers. We go in with the most creative idea that we can. And sometimes the sales teams go, whoa, 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 hang on. These guys are not going re- to want to see this because, you know, you've got spacemen on it and you've got fireworks over here. And, and it's like, well, yeah, but that's exciting. And they go, no. This is a public sector financial body. They are not going to want to see this stuff, right? So I think the biggest mistakes I've made is is, is potentially turning it down a bit too much because I know that I'm probably going to get sidelined and go, well, let's play it safe. So what I now do is I now go in with the wild ideas and let them take, tame them back a bit to a point where actually we've got something punchy but it's not so dampened that it just feels like another piece of our corporate material. But it's not so out there that the customer's going to look at it and go, well, what are these guys on? You know, they've, they've gone mental. So uh, this is where I think that a lot of marketers kind of will play it safe in my book. Um, and I think when I say play it safe, it's not necessarily playing it safe to a point of, you know, being boring. It's playing it safe to their own brand and not pushing it towards the customers. That, I think, is probably where a lot of marketers fall down. But I'm going to say that, right, because my ABM's my, my bag of my game. But if if you don't look at what the customer's going to find interesting and appealing, 
and you focus more on your brand, all that happens is you talk about you and yourself and what you want to do and what you want to see and what you're expecting and what they can get. Actually, you kind of need to reverse that completely and go, we know you've got these problems, right? Everybody knows it. It's out there in the public space. We're going to help you solve that problem by doing these things and then talk about what those things are. But starting with yourself, I think is probably the, the biggest drawback that a lot of people get. But I think lockdown's changed that. I don't know if you've seen that. I think lockdown for me has seen a lot of people start to person, like bring, bring personality to their brand. So they bring a lot of their people to the forefront now. And everything's so people focused, which is awesome. The B2B industry has needed to do that for a long time. I don't know if you've seen the same. Absolutely. I think, you know, I think one of the main drivers for that is even organizations have been able to see their colleagues. So so let's let's take a marketing department, right? And I I completely agree with you. I think what, what has caused it is, let's take a marketing department. They were previously, they were in the corporate environment of the office, quote unquote. All of a sudden, they go into each other's bedrooms or home offices and you see a different picture of, of someone right it's not all, all of a sudden it's not button up shirts it's maybe a t-shirt it's maybe a hoodie and and i feel like it it brings some of the barriers down yes i understand people say you know you, you lose the human touch and stuff like that but i think on a on a larger scale what happens is people start to see the the people side within their own organization and they're like well you know let's let's portray that out because i think in a lot of situations we sometimes portray what's inside inside of the organization which is again let's go to the boardroom let's sit down there's whiteboards and stuff let's brainstorm and and i feel like that being removed and i'm speculating over here but I feel like that being removed has has definitely had an impact of making it a little bit more human. But I've definitely seen it. Um, now you mentioned it, I, I can I can definitely identify with with the few instances that I'm like, that's pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, I think, absolutely. I think, it's for the, I think it's for the better because a lot of people like a lot of brands prior to this is going to sound really stereotypical, but a lot of brands pre COVID were quite faceless. You know, they didn't really have anything that that made them feel like you could connect with them yeah, especially in the, in the beats but i'm talking b2b more than anything um and then you kind of start to see started to see this kind of increase in okay we're all locked down we're all stuck inside with our family and kids and or or on our own in apartments and you know in all these different scenarios and we all kind of suddenly wanted this human connection more than we ever had. And actually there was those, I mean, we, we did this really nice thing around. Um, so to keep the kids busy, we did a lot around STEM. So we did like, you know, activity books and stuff like that for your families and kids to share. And we did that online and pushed it through LinkedIn and things like that, which was quite a nice way of doing it. And it was kind of saying, look, we know your world's changed completely now and you've got a lot more on your plate than you probably realised before, but we're still there as an organisation. And, you know, even when we do, uh, we've done a campaign recently on decarbonisation and we used our people because we believe in it. It's not because Mm. we want to show them and and give them an ego boost. It's because these people are the ones leading that, that fight and that drive to decarbonize the way technology is delivered and that's if you don't show a personal face to that it just comes across as another corporate my message really yeah very true very true no i love that neil i want to ask you some rapid fire questions but before i get to those rapid fire questions is there anything that you think i didn't ask or you think it's important for us to talk about with regards to uh themes and building themes and mistakes around themes no, I don't think so. I think the only thing really is that uh, it's probably just reiteration, really. When it comes to the themes, is it's it just has to be completely sourced around who you're targeting, not necessarily just about not just about yourself, but by the same token, there's a balance to be had, right? And there's a um, a challenge that I've thrown to a lot of agencies in the past around how do we make ourselves different in a world where everybody's trying to be different. And that 
that's the hardest bit. And one of the parts of that is to still stay true to yourself. So don't try and falsely acclaim to being something you're not. You know, don't try and say that you are, you know, if, if you're working for a, 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 a solicitor's firm, you know, don't go in and say you're a digital technology company. It's just, it's just not going to work. So you've, you've got to find ways to be true to yourself, but also attribute that to the people you're targeting because that's where you're going to get the most leverage and the better the theme. That's where your theme's going to come from. Love it. Love it. All right. Let's do some rapid fire questions. First thing I want to ask is yeah. what is one resource, could be a book, blog, podcast, talk, that has fundamentally changed the way you you work or the way you live or had a really big impact on you. And hey, if it was if it's more than one, shoot away. There is one, definitely. So I was actually an event. So I went to this was what, three years ago. And um, I went to the B2B marketing ABM conference. And at the time I was literally in kind of the precursor stages of building a small pilot program for ABM. In the, just in the UK, there was going to be like two, three accounts. We we're going to test what I'd built and just see where we went with it. And we'd started to build it out and I started to sort of go through the framework, do some of the workshops, start to look at what we could do. And then I went to the ABM conference and I was challenged before I went there. They said, uh, my, my marketing director said, what more can we do? Because what we're doing at the minute in ABM is really cool. So we need to take on more accounts. Let's expand the program. Let's start to make it a little bit more official and we'll do something really good. So I went to this conference and I sat there in, I must have sat in about six different talks. One was a, with a, an awesome lady called Gemma Davies at ServiceNow. Um, and you know, I still speak to her every so often nowadays. And I sat there and in every single talk, I was like, yep, yeah, I've got this. I'm doing this already. That's working. That's working. I went to watch Gemma's and I went, holy crap, I'm doing everything wrong. And I just completely like changed everything that I did and made me go, right, I'm not going to do it. Because I, I, I suddenly realized I was doing things the same way as everyone else. That comes back to the point I was making earlier about differentiating in a world of differentiation, right? It just, if, if you're not, if your program isn't different, if you're not engaging in a different way internally, it's not going to come across different externally either. So it's finding those little ways to make your program different that's going to really make it stand out. But that was, uh, yeah, that was the turning point for me. That wasn't a rapid fire answer, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Okay. That was, that was, uh, that was, but that was a good one. That was a <laughs> flamethrower. Yeah, that was a good one. The question number two is if you could give one advice to B2B marketers. I would say aim, aim high. Like it's, it sounds like a really cheesy line to say, but when I say aim high, it's not necessarily about, you know, for yourself. It's more about getting the right people engaged in what you want to do. So if you want to do a campaign and you think it's going to be the best campaign you can, it can be, go to your sales director, go to your global sales director, go go as high, go to your CEO, right? There's nothing stopping you being able to go to the top people in your organization and go, I want your buy-in into this because this is going to be awesome. You know, if you truly have a belief in it, then go, go do it. Don't kind of, I think we, as B2B marketers, we often hide behind a, a facade of being safe and, and measured, um, which is good to a point, but internally you need to excite people. And if you don't do that, people won't get behind it and it'll become another kind of gray campaign. You won't get the black and white and the excitement around it. Um, so you, I think for me, just keep just, just aiming high. Don't feel like you have to be restricted. Aim high and go bold. Okay. Question number three and the last question. What's something that excites you about B2B today? I think B2B is by far the most creative marketing industry, um, which is probably a bit of a bold statement to make um, because I'm sure if any B2C marketers are sitting there, they go, oh, get out of it. You, you've, you guys just do boring stuff all the time. But I, I think we have to think so differently to anything else. And we have so many different levels to think about 
So, you know, we will go, especially if you take ABM, we'll go from a one-to-one person level to a one-to-one account to a group of accounts, like like three to four accounts, to, you know, possibly 10 to 20 accounts, to 5,000 accounts, you know, and we have to think about each and every one of those in a different way. And we've got to think creatively to be able to find the right answers for that. So I think it's that creative thinking for me that is most exciting about B2B. Um, I think with B2C, you've got, to, you've got to think outside the box. But a lot of the time it's to, it's to do with kind of the bigger brand awareness piece, right? For us, it's all about relevancy. And if you're not being relevant and you're not not driving towards that customer focus, you lose your customers quite quickly. And that's why I, I, I love B2B because it's just, you've got to think so much more differently and you've got to be, you've, you've got to know your customer a lot better. Neil, I love this. This has been a, uh, a pretty awesome conversation. As I said, you know, building themes is, is close to heart. And, and I think you've, you've dropped a lot of golden nuggets in our conversation. There's a lot of signal in the sea of noise that I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the listeners are going to enjoy. So, look, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Really enjoyed the chat. And, and we might bring you on again. Yeah, no problem. It'd be good to be on. Thanks for having me. This episode of Growth Colony was produced by Alexander Hipwell. It was edited by Dave Samito with additional editing and music also by Alexander Hipwell. Special thanks to Tina Wabe and Rod Hoda. We couldn't make this show without you. The show is hosted by Shaheen Hoda. If you enjoyed the episode, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify. Yes, you can rate on Spotify now, so please do. And share the pod with a friend you think could get value out of it. If you'd like to connect with the members of Growth Colony, join our free Slack channel at growthcolony.org forward slash Slack. Thanks again for all the support and we'll see you again in the next one. This podcast is brought to you by Xgrowth, an account-based marketing agency with a strong specialization in the APAC market. If you're starting to roll out an account-based marketing initiative in your firm or looking to take your current program to the next level, whether it's one-to-one, one-to-few, or one-to-many, don't try to do it all alone. Chat with the ABM experts at Xgrowth to see how they can help you both on strategy and execution of your next ABM campaign. To find out more, head to www.xgrowth.com.au. That's www.xgrowth.com.au.